Yeah, so I'm the web manager at SRUC, which is Scotland's rural college. Before that, um, I was the Duncan that Gareth was often referring to in his talk. Uh, so I was, <laughs> I, I was at the University of St Andrews before, and I was the guy that set up the other team. Uh, and I find myself doing something similar at SRUC as well. Um, so hopefully I don't repeat too much of what um, Gareth said. Um, and it's, it's interesting to compare what I was doing at St Andrews with what I'm doing now at SRUC because they're very different solutions and it's kind of taught me how uh, the approach you need to take very much depends on the circumstances that you're in. Uh, the thing about University of St Andrews was that uh, I learned a lot when I was working there. And there you can see me learning about, you probably can't really see it, it's how to choose the perfect URL, which is a classic .NET magazine article that's gone down in history. Uh, so there's me learning that with uh, Gareth back in the day in the web team office. Um, this was my first proper grown-up job. Uh, so I grew a lot and learned a lot at St Andrews. And uh, Gareth and Steve and the whole team were great teachers and mentors for me. Um, so I learned a lot as well about things like uh, web management best practice, essentially everything I know about running a university website I know from the web team at St Andrews. I also learned that you need to be really careful with how you position your social media icons on a website. That actually, ha <laughs> that actually happened to a website I was designing. Thank thankfully I caught it before we launched. And I also learned a lot about internal politics, um, which we all know HE institutions are very bizarre organisations in a lot of ways. At St Andrews I was there for about five years I think, and in that time I worked for four different departments. Um, so I very quickly learned that navigating the choppy political waters is absolutely key to getting anything done in a higher education institution. And I also learned about running a team, so uh, I dug that tunnel, as uh, Gareth said, with the trusty teaspoon and uh, dug a tunnel to admissions and created the digital communications team. Uh, so how that began, I was seconded uh, to focus on redesigning the pages aimed at prospective students uh, to try and drive st uh, student recruitment. And um, I found it a very interesting experience because I've been to IWNW in the past and I read articles online about uh, how digital teams in such institutions should, should be structured. Should we be in comms or marketing or should we be in IT? Should we be structured like this or structured like that? Uh, and moving across to admissions was a, a, maybe a slightly strange idea on paper. Uh, so it was very interesting to kind of try something out that was a bit different and kind of experience it for myself. And what I found with working in the admissions department uh, was that it's a very kind of different feeling to working in a more central team like a comms or an IT environment where you might be in a bit of an ivory tower sometimes. Um, and it's also working for a team like admissions is actually in a way a very luxurious position that you can't replicate very easily. And the most important thing I found about working directly with admissions was having the conversation in the, in the cor corridor uh, and just being with them was absolutely essential for kind of building trust with the admissions team. So I began to find that I was no longer an outsider to be suspicious of from this central team that comes in and crushes their hopes and dreams. Uh, I was part of their team. I was physically located with them in their building. And I found that because I could chat with them in the corridor, uh, bounce ideas around, my advice began to be taken a lot more seriously and uh, we all worked together because we saw that we had the same agenda and that we can push uh, towards it. So it's really useful to, um, for generating ideas. And it's also really useful, I found, for learning about users and we think about what gurus like Jared Spool say about uh, how spending actual time with your actual users is one of the, the most important things you can do if you want to improve your user experience. And we don't always get this sort of chance uh, when in, in these kinds of roles. And I didn't get that much of a chance either, even when I was working with admissions, even though we did sort of try to do usability testing and focus groups and things like that. But what was different about working for admissions was that there, a lot of those staff members are going out and about and pressing the flesh and meeting students face to face and speaking to them all the time, students and parents. And they've got a really kind of in-depth knowledge of their users in a way that I think a lot of central teams might not ever experience. So being able to uh, 
uh, speak to my colleagues in admissions, a lot of that knowledge began to rub off on me and I learned a lot about our users that I'd never learned before. So colleagues in admissions, very knowledgeable about their users. The only bit that's really missing is that they don't perhaps necessarily know how to translate that knowledge into a good digital product or a good website. Uh, so that was quite an important lesson because I think often if you're in a central team uh, based in IT for instance or comms, it's, it's easy to think that you're the centre of the universe or the font of all knowledge, which is human nature, we all kind of tend to think that. Um, but having worked for all these different departments and, and switched roles a lot in St Andrews, um, I began to see the different perspectives and how you know no one can possibly know everything. Uh, so that was quite key to, to think about what our role is as digital managers, that it's, uh, it's about learning from others and it's got to be a two-way relationship. Obviously part of our job is to teach people but it's also to learn from people as well. Um, so our job really is to coordinate all that knowledge and, and to make it all join up. So that I found working for admissions really valuable but uh, working this way was not sustainable and you know for one thing what about all the other departments in the university why couldn't they get, get this sort of attention um, but for me personally it was a huge burden as well because it meant effectively I was a one-man band because I was there working for admissions I'd been to conduit out from the web team and I was a little bit by myself and uh, I was having a lot of expectations placed upon me from my managers. Uh, so I was being expected to determine a new information architecture. I was to audit and rewrite all the content, which was hundreds of pages. Um, I was asked to come up with strengthened content management processes. Um, and then later on I learned that I was being expected to come up with a new visual design as well. One that I would probably have to code up and program the CMS myself. And alongside all that, I had my own aim as well, which was to try and change the culture within the institution and, and try to embed a more user-centered approach and, and get, think, uh, get my colleagues thinking more about our users. And the deadline for all this was six months. And those tasks, while they're all within my abilities, um, I was being spread very thinly. Uh, so it was a, there were some scary times then. Um, it took a few stabs, but I eventually managed to persuade management to uh, hire a couple of people to help me out. And that's how we formed the digital communications team. So who did we hire? Um, first uh, post was a web designer post. Uh, someone to make it pop, because that's what they wanted. Um, and the reason I wanted to hire a web designer was because the, the web team historically had you know, lots of technical expertise, but we'd never had anyone who was specifically focused on UI or visual design, and I kind of saw this as an opportunity to fill that gap. And uh, at the same time, that was kind of playing into the requests we were getting for stronger visual impact on the website. Um, so we hired a web designer. We found uh, Lewis Wick, who's uh, got a great visual eye, did a great job, does a great job I'm sure. I've not worked with him for a while yet. Um, we also hired a web content editor uh, to lead on issues surrounding content. And the reason I wanted to do that was because we always bang on a lot about how content should come first and how it's the most important and the most time consuming aspect of any web project. And it's absolutely true. Uh, yet, uh, historically, I think the web team has kind of, uh, content was not our problem. Um, so on the one hand we were saying content's the most important thing but then we were also saying we're not doing anything about it. Uh, so I kind of again saw that as an opportunity to actually push for some content resource and actually do something about it. And again we found Carly Hollis uh, who hit the ground running and, and challenged everyone straight away. She's a great person to work with um, and she is the queen of content so content is queen. So we'd created the uh, digital communications team and, and hopefully by uh, hiring those um, different types of people that help distinguish my team from uh, the web team. So, ta-da, we launched the website and, and there it is. Um, because once we'd formed the team, things really ramped up and we got there in the end. Uh, so we were uh, jolly pleased with ourselves with this and then as soon as we launched it, we were promptly restructured again and uh, we moved to corporate comms and our remit changed a little bit um, to focus on the entire external facing website, which was fine because it's, it's kind of what we were expecting. Um, it's still exciting work, but of course, this whole time there was an elephant in the room and that was the relationship with the web team and how we maintain that. 
because um, I wanted to retain the new ways of working that I developed and you know the exciting work I was doing with my new team and to harness the enthusiasm of our new colleagues but at the same time I was very anxious to carefully manage the relationship with the web team because I knew that we'd have to rely heavily on them to actually produce our work and like I say they're, they're my friends and mentors and there we are last year looking at this solar eclipse as a team, uh, some of us more safely than others. Um, so I, I knew that all along that there was a really good chance that the teams would, would be merged back together again and, and the whole thing that had been built around me was a temporary setup. Because um, having two separate teams doing pretty similar work is not really sustainable. Uh, so keeping good relations was key and we did merge again. Um, and the rewards came as, as Gareth explained, but for me it was kind of the end of the road at St Andrews. Um, that's not how I'm voting tomorrow, it's um, my outboard, in outboard on, on my last day at work at St Andrews. And um, I was sort of starting a new life in Edinburgh. Um, so I got the teaspoon out again and started digging a new tunnel, bigger tunnel. And then, uh, this time I emerged at SRUC, which is Scotland's rural college. Uh, this is an institution that focuses on agriculture, land and the rural sector. Um, so I think, as far as I can gather, in terms of student and staff numbers, it's pretty similar actually in size to St Andrews, but it's very different in nature. And, uh, you know, when I started, people would kind of shuffle up to me apologetically and sort of go, oh, well, no, you don't know what you've let yourself in for. You know, it's a weird place. Um, but, you know, we all kind of play the top trump, so my institution's weirder than yours. My experience is um, SRUC isn't really that weird in comparison to St Andrews by any stretch, but it does have its challenges, and uh, it's, uh, uh, to explain that, I'll explain what SRUC actually is. So it was formed in 2012. It's a merger of four other colleges, Barony, Elmwood, Oak Ridge, and the Scottish Agricultural College, uh, SAC itself had, had been a merger of three colleges that had all come together in the 1990s. So there's a lot of uh, different histories there, lots of different cultures and lots of uh, physical locations as well. Uh, we also have three separate divisions. So we've got education and we provide education at all levels spanning from the college access courses right up to PhD and everything in between. We also provide vocational skills training and we've got a very separate uh, research division and there's not necessarily a strong relationship between uh, our education and our research work although the two divisions will be merged later this year. But where things get really interesting is with SAC Consulting which is our commercial arm and that provides services for farmers and rural businesses. It's a very major part of the organisation uh, and it also does a lot of work on behalf of uh, government. So um, that's what I think maybe makes SRUC even more complicated in a way than a lot of uh, HEIs in that it's got this quite large commercial arm. So it's not just focused on academic stuff. Uh, we've got quite an interesting f uh, geographical spread as well. So we have six education campuses that are spread all across Scotland. And then on top of that, we have some additional research facilities but uh, the SAC consulting arm has several more locations on top of that. And to give you an idea of the sort of scale of this, one of those offices is in Benbecula, which is an island that has a population of approximately 1,000. So we genuinely cover the whole of Scotland. And in fact, we do even more than that because uh, we also have an office in Kendal. Um, so if I thought content management was a challenge in St Andrews where people were spread across town and I thought that was a bit difficult to manage, this is a whole different ball game. So it's pretty difficult to have that conversation in the corridor that I valued so much at St Andrews. And of course, like any institution, we have our political challenges as well. Um, different in nature to St Andrews, but still there. Um, I guess a lot of this stems from the fact that it's quite a challenging environment for further education in Scotland in general uh, because of some, uh, I guess, kind of restructuring that's been going on across the whole sector in Scotland um, and that's being felt uh, by every institution and that kind of brings with it its own pressures. Um, it's, you know, that, that's where the merger came from and that possibly brings its own financial pressures. So that explains the background of the situation at SRUC. 
uh, and I had a new job there, hurrah, good for me. And I was the new web manager, and I was to be heading a small team of two based in the comms department. Um, what was odd was that both posts were vacant when I started. So <laughs> there had been a web manager before, but she left several weeks before I began, and there was no real handover to speak of. Um, I do want to stress though that I wasn't entering a complete vacuum because we do have a part-time web designer uh, but he works for another department, he works for IT and he's got his own agenda, he works in a different part of the building uh, so he didn't necessarily know all the answers to the questions I had about the aspects of the website that I had to look after. Um, so once again I found myself being a one-man band except that this time it was as if I was learning the instruments on the job um, because although I could take what I could glean from my colleagues in communications and from our web designer and people across the organization, essentially I had to kind of work everything out for myself. I had to work out the nature of SREC as an institution and how to get stuff done there. I had to do a lot of the thinking for myself in terms of working out how the CMS works. Um, I had to think about why had these previous decisions been made because uh, some aspects of the website didn't necessarily make sense to me but I know there must be some rationale behind them but I just didn't know what. And um, I had to work out what the content management process was because it wasn't necessarily clear to me what that had been in the past either. Uh, so I did that by sort of asking around and, and one of the content editors sa uh, said, oh, you know, your predecessor, he, she, she, she more or less just let me do what I want. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so, um, yeah, that other vacant post, we advertised for a digital communications officer um, and that's a post that had been vacant for even longer than the web manager post that I filled um, but, the, uh, but SRUC wanted to hire the web manager first and that enabled me to have a say in uh, how that role was shaped and uh, have a say in, in, in who we hired. Um, this post is kind of more, uh, historically it was more focused on social media and we've maintained that as well but this person also assists heavily with the work that I do with the website. And this is where we took a very different approach to what I did at St Andrews um, because at St Andrews with uh, our web designer and our web content editor that I, I'd hired as part of the digital communications team I always felt like I was learning from my supposedly junior colleagues because they were a bit younger and you know they knew a bit more stuff because I'm 30 now which means I'm well and truly over the hill in terms of digital um, and it's really important to be able to keep up to speed in terms of what's going on in digital so I thought having uh, younger colleagues was helpful at St Andrews. Uh, we did something a bit different at SRUC uh, because of the nature of the institution that's focused on the rural sector. So what we did was we found someone who had great expertise on rural matters. He's called Will Millership and his background, he worked for the Royal Highland Education Trust. Uh, doing all their communications. So he's a bit of a comms generalist, doesn't have a specifically digital background, um, but a really strong background in um, rural affairs and comms generally. And he also picks up digital concepts really quickly, so it's actually working really well. And that expertise he has in rural matters is really vital because I have no specialist knowledge in, in that area, even though I can knock together a, a half decent website. Uh, so that's really handy for Will because he can do things like Twitter chats um, uh, which is really handy for uh, reaching our audiences online. We do have another person which is a digital marketing officer who's based in education and uh, this person is designed to provide dedicated marketing resource to digital uh, which was uh, I guess maybe a perceived, um, it was perceived to be missing in the education department or they, they needed extra support in that area so we hired uh, this person as well. So we had a team and uh, time for a new fresh start right? Uh, well unfortunately not because this landed on my desk, it was called the Digital Roadmap and I've protected the identity of the agency in case I'm accidentally rude about them. Um, this, you'll see this was published in November 2014 which was seven months before I started and so, so I was given this and I had to work out what was what with it and some of the work outlined had already been carried out but a lot of it was still to be done, met, still to be done. and clearly it had uh, lain dormant for a while due to the departure of the previous digital team so I had to kind of try and kick start it again and, and work out what the story was, what the background was to all these projects 
Uh, so I had to kind of look at all these again and validate them and walk, speak to those stakeholders again, work out are they still relevant, uh, how could we push them forward, and obviously I had to look at the timescales because they were all slipping. And uh, we hit a, a quite an interesting issue when we looked at that top one there, the course finder, uh, and it's kind of a, it's a, it's a bit of a case study of the, the wider challenges we faced. Uh, so the roadmap talked about a small UI tweak that had already been carried out. But then once I started talking to the education department, uh, some more fundamental issues quickly emerged. Um, so for instance, there was anecdotal evidence that people couldn't really find the apply now button. And looking at it for myself, I can't really say I was surprised. Um, but the fact that education felt that the course finder wasn't meeting their original brief, it was news to central colleagues in comms and IS. So that was quite an interesting little scenario to work through. And another angle in this as well was that I well and truly put my foot in it before I even started at SREC because in my job interview I was asked that classic question, what would you do to change the website? And then the person who's interviewing you nicks all your ideas and doesn't hire you. But they, the SREC actually hired me. Um, and um, I, I featured Course Finder as one of the suggestions um, of what I would improve for the website. And apparently this is the actual slide I used in my job interview. And apparently this was one of the reasons I got the job. So I kind of signed myself up for redesigning it before I even <laughs> began working there. So we set about redesigning it. Uh, so in a way it's kind of duplicating a lot of the work that had been done before. Um, but my lack of knowledge of the history of the project was probably quite helpful in, in that I wasn't very precious about radically redesigning it. So as you can see, it's going to look really great. It's all black and white, and in Comic Sans, it's going to look wicked. So we're going to launch that in a few months. There are a lot of uh, interesting constraints. Uh, so. Um, the projects I find are quite slow moving, even by my experience of HIE in general. Um, there are, we've got 12 items on, on the digital roadmap and they are all moving forward and they're running concurrently, but in fits and starts. Uh, so I think of it as a bit of a snail race in that they're all moving forward, but seeing that actual tangible progress sometimes is, is hard to come by. And so far only two of those 12 projects are complete so far. And it's not anyone's fault, it's just kind of a function of where we are as an institution that uh, obviously, as we all know in a lot of uh, our institutions, web is only one of dozens of priorities for all our stakeholders. So engaging people uh, when I'm free is, is uh, you know, you can maybe only engage people for certain periods of time. Uh, so as an example, this is the alumni section. Uh, the original deadline for this was January 2015, which, if you've been paying close attention, was six months before I began. So when I started, it was one of my top priorities was to get this launched. Um, and I quickly found out the reasons why it maybe hadn't launched before. Um, so it was subject to a wide variety of delays that were kind of beyond my control. Um, but we finally launched it in April 2016, so it was a success in the end, but there were kind of big frustrations in the middle. Uh, something else I find a little bit constraining and, and interesting about the, the situation is that we've got a lot less ability to influence the design, partly because we have a much smaller team, partly because our half FTE web designer works for another department and has lots of other priorities on top of the website as well. And we have very little access to update the website design anyway, uh, because effectively, because of our setup, the design is outsourced to the CMS vendor. Uh, so if I want to implement a change to one line of CSS, say I want to change the font to Comic Sans on a whim, uh, I can't really do that. So a tiny tweak that I know I could do myself would cost and we'd have to get a quote for it and it becomes a full-blown thing. Uh, and we can't really do much along those lines. But we do have many success stories. Uh, so we've got a really great monitor pointing service. We can come round to your office and point at your monitors. <laughs> Um, but obviously we can uh, lend a fresh pair of eyes to multiple projects that, and sort of give a new spin on the legacy and hopefully we're doing some interesting work for that reason. And we're also developing new training programs, we've implemented uh, improved content management processes and so on. Will's doing a really great job on social media and this is our new boss who's outstanding in his field. I should, I should also add that I've learnt my sense of humour from Gareth as well. Um, <laughs> so what, where does that leave us and what are the next steps? Um, 
what this all makes me think is for an institution like mine, where does this leave the bigger picture stuff that the gurus talk about? What about user experience and what about things like digital transformation? Uh, because the position of the organization means that it thinks it has bigger priorities and it might be right. Um, and there are a lot of people across the institution I find are very oddly uninterested in the website. Um, and part of that is because or, you know, traditionally in the past, uh, the internet has not always been seen as the best way to reach people in rural communities who don't have very good internet speeds. So there's a bit of a legacy there to, to kind of work through a cultural issue. Uh, and another aspect as well is the fact that different platforms and channels uh, seem to be owned by different individuals in the institution. So uh, the course application system is primarily looked after by someone in IS and I might have suggestions to improve it but uh, we're quite limited in our scope to do so. But I kind of think that for me as an external facing web manager course applications is a pretty fundamental part of it, so I'm quite interested to, to try and get a bit more involved in that. Things like the intranet are nothing to do with me, the VLE is nothing to do with me, uh, and in practice I leave Will to deal with the social media, so I only really look after the, the comms element of the external facing website. Uh, so what I'd like to do in the long run is create a cow path and um, help the institution see that a cohesive experience across all these different applications is uh, vital to good user experience and, and student satisfaction and all that kind of good stuff that's hopefully going to keep us going in the future. So that's me for now. Thank you very much. <laughs>